Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this puts the DIY, and lately I've been using a GoPro camera to do time lapses and try to integrate time lapses of things I normally wouldn't have filmed before into my videos. And so that's included 3D printing, uh, I'm trying to include some soldering footage, things like that. Uh, but one situation I was running into was, uh, the reason why I was using the GoPro is it's really easy to set up and not interfere with the process that you're doing, uh, but the footage would sometimes be a little bit on the dark side depending on where I was filming and I didn't want to lug my lights that I use for the camera because the whole point of using the GoPro is to kind of minimize things. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to try to make a lens light for the GoPro that would be kind of small and kind of mount onto the camera so that you aren't like taking up a lot of space but it's still getting the job done. Uh, so I decided to try using a NeoPixel RGBW ring. Uh, and what that means is that a traditional NeoPixel, it controls the red, green, and blue values to make the different colors. And RGBW is, means that there is a separate parameter you can control for the amount of um, white light that's coming through. Uh, and they sell them in different temperatures. Uh, so I got one that is kind of a room temperature, more of like a natural white, not like a blinding one. Uh, and so I decided I wanted to be able to just use the white light coming from the NeoPixel ring. And then in the code, I have a potentiometer wired up so that the potentiometer values are controlling uh, the amount of white light that's showing through so that when I turn the potentiometer, I can make it look brighter or darker depending on um, the amount of light that I need for a setup. So after knowing that the NeoPixel is gonna fit around, I needed to design and print a housing for this all to fit onto the camera. Uh, so first was designing a, a diffuser for the light ring. So I used transparent PLA, and uh, I actually started out by printing um, a ring just by itself to test to make sure it was going to fit, uh, and also make sure I was gonna give the uh, kind of effect I wanted to, and that it wouldn't interfere with the lens on the GoPro camera. The next part was gonna be mounting the trinket and the potentiometer onto the camera and also having it like be attached to the lens. But first I wanted to make sure that the fit was gonna be okay for the trinket and the trim pod. So I went through a couple different sizings and designs for what's going on inside of the housing for like mounting. And I finally came up with one that worked and that's on the side here. So there's kind of these two little wedges in the back that the board kind of clicks into so that keeps it nice and secure. And in the final revision, I also did some cutouts for the GPIO pins to come through for the wiring. And then of course, making sure the pot was gonna fit nice and snug on top of like a little square. So having those designed first in Fusion 360 was really helpful because then afterwards, I just had to figure out how they were all gonna join up and that went really smoothly. Uh, because I, I knew that the main parts were all set and I'd done test prints, so it made the final de design process a lot easier. So I recommend that if kind of you're starting out with design, um, just making sure that like all your parts are going to fit properly first and then connecting them all, all up if you're doing a more complicated design like this. And um, this part in here, you can see it's, um, it's hollowed out so that it's basically acting as cable channels for everything, so it keeps it nice and neat. Um, and for the final print, I actually did a color change uh, similar to what was included in the design for the OK synth, which was in our last video, um, where you set a layer height to have your printer basically pause the print so you can come and change the filament. So I kept it with the translucent PLA for the light part, then switched over to yellow to match the case I have on my GoPro for the housing for the trinket and the trim pot. The trinket also works for me because when I'm doing time lapses, I keep the GoPro um, plugged in uh, to an outlet. I don't run on the battery. So for the trinket too, I can run it off of power instead of a battery. But if you wanted to use the same circuit and design with a battery, the trinket does have pads to solder a surface mount uh, JST battery connector on the back. So you could do that, or you could maybe use a different board if you really want it to be battery powered. Or of course, like I'm using for this demo purpose, you can just use a battery bank with it as well. So a couple options if you want it to be portable, but for my needs, I just leave it in one spot. Uh, so that's why I'm just leaving it with just the USB connector. 
This is definitely the most detailed thing I've ever designed in Fusion 360 because I had to keep in mind like how the wires are going to route and everything. Uh, for the wiring, it's really handy that the NeoPixel ring has two ground pads and two 5 volt power pads so that you can uh, daisy chain uh, rings if you want to. But what I ended up doing was being able to actually run ground and 5 volt power to the uh, potentiometer that way. So I'm only having four wires coming from the trinket and that definitely helped streamline everything. So it's a really simple project, but definitely a very useful one. I actually think it might be the most useful project I've used uh, to date. I like that it just kind of snaps on uh, and fits and then you've got a little light. And just so you can see the impact of the lighting on the footage, but now you're going to see some time-lapse footage of a print with the light and as you can see it just looks a lot brighter you can see things a lot better uh, and the light is natural so it looks like it's natural lighting it doesn't feel like an led like being really sharp on um, the subject so that's really nice uh, and being able to adjust it definitely makes like all the difference but yeah that's gonna wrap up for this video uh, i'm gonna have links to uh, download the stl file um, for it to print and also the code if you want to make your own uh, and I'll have a guide um, up as well so that you'll be able to make your own if you are interested. Uh, like I said, it's a really useful project. Um, it could also be scaled up or down or changed around for your camera. Like this is an older GoPro. It's the Hero 3 Plus, but you could modify the files so that it would fit over other lenses, um, other GoPro lenses or the other action cams that are getting really popular these days. Um, I'm considering maybe also scaling it up eventually to maybe make one for my camera um, so it would fit on the, the lens around. I think that'd be pretty cool because they do sell lights like that. Um, so it'd be cool to make my own. Uh, and also it would have a built-in diffuser because that's the one thing about video lights is they often don't come with a diffuser so you just have LEDs and unless you get like a soft box then it's not going to work out too well. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, Toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, I'm looking forward to giving you properly lit uh, time lapses now going forward. And uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Mm -hmm.